Okay, here we are. We're going to be talking today about this uh, the playing on guitar, the thing that Buddy Emmons played on steel guitar for an intro to the Ray Price version of Nightlife back in the 50s. Okay, this is a, a nice little intro. It's pretty hip uh, sounding. It gives you some challenges playing it on guitar as opposed to pedal steel, and that's going to give us an opportunity to talk about some of the tricks of playing chord melody. Okay, so the basic idea Here's what it sounds like if you play it correctly. Okay, sounds very smooth, but I had to work on uh, figuring out fingerings that would be easy to do and that would not um, cause my hand to tense up and so I would make mistakes. Okay. The basic uh, formula of it, there are a lot of different ways to play chord melody, but what Emmons is doing here is he's playing little melodic ideas. And on the last note of the idea, you get a chord. So what you need to do is figure out a fingering that will enable you to get from melody to a chord and make it sound smooth because it has to sound smooth for it to work. Okay, so okay, that's the fingering I would use. It's not necessarily the way I would play it if I were just playing melody, but I I want to have I want to be coming off of this finger to get to the chord. The reason is because this finger isn't needed in this chord, at least not the way I'm fingering it. Um, you can either play the chord this way or this way, but either way this finger can take a break after the melody part. Okay, And this chord incidentally is a 6-9 chord, it's based on this A kind of shape of a D chord. That's the way I would normally play it, again in this situation. I'm, I want to avoid having this finger being part of the chord because it's it's playing the melody part. Okay. Okay. This shape is a nice one. It's based on this D7 kind of shape. Except the root is here. It's an F note. Alright. So this fingering, the way I did it there was keep doing that when I'm not thinking, but that's not, I don't think that's the best way to do it. You can go, but watch what happens when I go from the melody to the chord. That finger has to move. It's got a tricky little jump there. It's doable. It's not terrible. It's it's my default way of doing it. Like I say, when I don't think, that's what I do, because it seems like the obvious thing to do. But you can also do this. If you do this, that's weird to play a melody like that. You wouldn't normally bring down your pinky next to your index. But relax your hand immediately on getting that pinky down there. Then you just move it over and put the rest of the chord down. Okay, makes it a lot easier. Now, the next melody idea is slightly different. Instead of it's Okay, because the chord's changing, the melody note has to change to reflect it. But you can see the logic of this, but it's awkward to play. There are guys that like to do this kind of <laughs> this kind of stretch melody. There are times when it's useful, but um, if I can avoid it, I will. I would rather play this. It's very easy fingering there. The only thing that's weird is if you're used to going... If you're, if, if, if you're thinking that the melody is here, okay, and then suddenly it's a shift and you're starting with your pinky, that can confuse people. That's one of the hardest things about playing in different positions and moving around the neck, that people just kind of get lost because they, you know, they use, mentally they're using probably the index as an anchor finger, and then suddenly the whole thing just kind of shifts. It's just easy to get confused. So you got to practice the transition. The confusion of moving from this position to this one is enough to trigger tension in your left hand. So again, even though this is not difficult, it throws you off mentally, so 
that means your hand tenses up. So watch for that and be careful. Okay, this kind of Johnny Smith voicing. Uh, which for, uh, what is this? Uh, B flat major 7 chord. Very nice. Okay, and then same thing again. This is not the full chord. I'm going to give you the full chord in a minute. But if you, this is most of it. This is based on this shape. Okay. This augmented uh, dominant seventh chord here. Seven plus five chord. And that sounds cool if you go. Sounds perfectly fine. But it's hip if you can get this flat five note down there. That's what Emmons did. Much more lush and interesting. Okay, so what you need to do is work on getting this and then adding the thumb to that note on that A string. Okay, now you can actually you can put the note down here too, but I don't think Emmons did. But if you want to, if it's easier, it still sounds pretty cool. Okay, so again, the whole thing. Is like this. Now this is actually pretty easy. Going from going from this to and this an easy little mini bar. Okay, playing the D major seven chord based on that shape. Okay. All right. One last time. The intro. All right. Nice 50 sounding chords there. Very nice.